yeah. for sure. So now the the point is who is going to win this derby, Ooh, and maybe tactics. maybe affecting maybe affecting the the confidence also for the for the second leg game. Interesting. All right, use the hashtag Phoenix Press. Let us know what you think. Let's head to Goodison and speak to the man in the know, Matt Critchley. Matt, oh, it's a rainy Goodison as well. Just Matt, tell us a little bit about how the British media have responded to that line from Pep Guardiola, and will it rattle Jose Mourinho? <laughs> Yeah, hi Nicky. Uh, rainy Goodison Park is probably an understatement, to be fair. I'll just take the umbrella away for a little second. It has been pouring down here for about five hours now. Luckily, the game won't be under any threat, I don't think. The pitch has absorbed the water really well, but it really is a lot of rain falling on Merseyside. I'm predicted in Manchester throughout the day, so that's one to keep an eye on. But yeah, yesterday was just a remarkable day at that Pep Guardiola press conference because it was unremarkable. What happens is there's two distinct sections of a press conference. It happens throughout the Premier League. They have the first part of the press conference, which is mainly for broadcasters and radio journalists. And then in the second part, it's called an embargoed section, which is really to protect UK newspapers. And that takes place in the second half of the press conference. But the, the, the information, the quotes can't be used till much later in the day. And in that part of the press conference is what you've just heard from Pep Guardiola talking about Mina Raiola. He wasn't particularly provoked. He was talking about rivals, about agents. And then he went on his, his little rant about Raiola and told us that golden piece of information, huge news, that Paul Pogba and Henrik Mkhitaryan, even they were, uh, they were only offered by the agent to Manchester City, they were still offered, it seems, even though Raiola has denied it, that he spoke to Guardiola, it would seem that Pogba and Mkhitaryan offered to Manchester City, which was, was mega news. It was yeah. as big as it could get ahead of a Manchester derby. I really wonder what Jose Mourinho's response will be. We'll hear from him a little bit later, of course. It may stoke the fires between them once again. We know they've fallen out and had a chequered history. And Actually, Guardiola spoke about it yesterday and said, we're fine now, me and Jose. We've had <laughs> two years here in Manchester together and there's there's no problems but I wonder whether Guardiola revealing that information on the eve of a derby, a derby that as we know Manchester City can win the Premier League title by being victorious later on this afternoon, I just wonder what that could do, so um, yeah, interesting times indeed, I would show you the newspapers guys but with one hand on the microphone <laughs> and one hand on the umbrella, it's not too easy but I'll do my absolute best because we can show you the back pages here, agent tried to flog me pog, that's the back page of the Daily Star and another one here for you, Pep I turned down Pogba signing in January. So it just goes to show, just re-emphasizes those words yeah. that you heard from, from Pep Guardiola a short time ago. The newspapers, unsurprisingly, have gone rather big on this one. Matt, there is another derby to talk of. Of course, you're at Everton for the Merseyside derby. Just, I just want to hear from you on, on Wednesday night because I was texting my cousin Dale, who, who's a die-hard red. He was sat in the cop and he said the atmosphere at Anfield was the best he'd ever experienced in his entire life. Just how was it for you and how did it compare to those incredible European nights that, that you've witnessed? Yeah, it was right up there, Nicky, right up there with the very best. I think everybody involved in Liverpool would say something similar. I mean, the, the, the key European nights I think you think of for uh, Liverpool fans of, of any age, really, you go all the way back to the, the late 70s and a game, a famous game against St Etienne where David Fairclough scored a, a goal having come off the substitutes bench and that got them through to the semi-finals of the European Cup. There's been nights in the last 10 or 15 years against Chelsea that the atmosphere in the semi-finals of the Champions League has been right up there. But even though this was only a quarter-final this was something very special indeed it was, it was really one of those moments that made their hairs on the back of your neck stand up the, the atmosphere before the game of course it was really unfortunate what happened to the Manchester City bus yeah. and that was not something that anybody was was happy about or not something that anybody was happy to condone but it, it, it really revved up the atmosphere going into the game and then to be stood inside the ground as the cop sung the famous anthem you'll never walk alone and then we had the Champions League music it, it undoubtedly just I don't know what it did to Manchester City but it certainly lifted Liverpool up a notch or two it was a, a magnificent performance, wasn't it, from Liverpool on the night. And now, really, it's bizarre because even though we're looking forward to a Merseyside derby here where we do expect changes from the Liverpool team, quite yeah. a lot of changes, even though we're looking forward massively to that game later in Manchester, we can't wait for Tuesday night as well when they go head-to-head -head once again, Manchester City and Liverpool. So, so much football to look forward to over the next three or four days. If only this rain would stop! <laughs> well, we're all right over here in the studio, Matt, but we will come back to you a little later for Team News. Hopefully, you'll be joined by former Everton player Stephen Pienaar for that one. So, we'll see you shortly. Get inside, get a cup of tea. And